team and I have traveled to Brazil, into the heart of the famous Amazon rainforest, in our search for Bigfoot-like creatures. The Amazon is gigantic, a perfect place for a large undiscovered primate to hide. The Amazon rainforest basin is roughly the size of the lower 48 states in the US, and it's filled with plants and animals that could kill you almost instantly. Push up. There are poisonous snakes, spiders, cats like ocelot or jaguars, not to mention giant anteaters. And the river is home to the man-eating piranha, crocodiles, and thousands of fish species. The tribes here number into the hundreds, but all of them talk about a mysterious, hideous creature they call the Mapinguari, and that's why we're here. The information coming out of the jungles about these creatures is scarce, but from what we've heard, they are large, undiscovered, bipedal animals that are covered in fur similar to a Bigfoot. But if the rumors are to be believed, there are some key differences, such as they only have one eye in the center of their head with backward-facing feet and a mouth in the middle of their stomach. While these characteristics seem outlandish, there is just not enough known about these creatures to verify one way or another. And that's why we've come to the capital city of Amazonas, Manaus. It's our jumping off point before heading into the rainforest. We've come here to gather supplies and find out more about these creatures to try to determine if there are Bigfoot-like creatures in the jungles of Brazil. Ramming speed. You guys ready for Brazil? I'm ready, baby. Usually I'm not too excited to go someplace that's hot, humid, and mosquito-y, but I'm fired up for Brazil. Cha-cha-cha. Imagine the size of fish they have to fry in that pan. No, look at that. <laughs> that's King Kong's camping plate. Yeah! Muy <laughs> macho! Manau is the largest city in the Amazon. It's along the Rio Negro and goes back to colonial times with the rubber barons. Pescado! Oh, fish market. But this is a fishing port. Fishing nets, fishing markets, fishermen. Fish, fish, fish. Far as you can see and smell. That's a giant Ocellaris bass right there. Yeah, that's one of the most aggressive game fish there is anywhere in the world. They are so much more aggressive than anything we have in North America. I've wanted to come to Brazil for a long time because there's a lot of things I want to do here. To come here and look for the Mapinguari, for me, that's just crossing another item off the beautiful Brazilian Barrackman Bigfoot bucket list, baby. In our shopping excursion, the fish market was definitely a highlight for me. I've kept tropical fish aquariums all my life, and the vast majority of the species that you keep in a fish tank come from the Amazon. So to see my pets in a fish market was super interesting, but a little weird at the same time. I mean, imagine going into a place and saying, well, do you want to taste some basset hound or do you want some Labrador retriever? The heads are off, but you can still recognize the body shape, right? That's what it was like for me. Red-tailed catfish over here, arowanas over here. We have peacock bass over here. Those are pets, they're not food. Well, we're going up the river and into the jungle, so this is our last chance to get anything we might need. Oh, blow dart. <laughs> so basically, we find the little frog, and we roll this on the frog. I get it right on Matt. We've come pretty well equipped for our time in the jungle, but there's a few last minute items that we need to pick up. I've been jungle camping before. There's leeches, there's hoogly googlies of all types, and I'm not letting those guys in my pants. I'm sleeping off the ground. We need hammocks. There's some hammocks. This is made it for a palm tree. Oh, palm tree. Yes. Okay. Nice. You could sleep in it all night and in the morning when you need to go catch a fish. <laughs> just throw this in. <laughs> I think we got everything we need. Yeah. Now we got to go talk to David Oren. He's the guy for years, if you read stuff about mapping Guari online, you'd always see his name. But this guy seems to think it's like a giant sloth or something. Yeah, this is an exploratory trip. We don't know what we're up against here. Mapping Guaris could be almost anything. And what is it? It could be Sasquatch-like creatures. We don't know. Well, it's big, and it's mysterious, and it breaks branches, and it makes screams. Could be a Bigfoot, but we're in the Amazon, so it could be, God, anything. Now that we've got the supplies we need to survive in the jungle, we need more information to try to get close to a Mapinguari. So we're gonna go meet with Dr. David Oren. 
He's an ornithologist that moved to Brazil back in the 1970s to study birds. And to my knowledge, he's the only Westerner to do any significant research on the Mapinguari. Now, of course, we've heard the stories about Mapinguaris being cyclopses or having backwards turned feet, but I find those things a little hard to swallow. Hopefully, Dr. Orn will shed some light on those strange details. I've read your name online for years, going back to the 90s, that whenever the word Mapinguari came up, they'd mention your name as somebody who had been down here collecting information, the question mm -hmm. being, well, what is it? Well, I, I've been working in the Amazon since 1977, and from day one in the forest, I heard these stories. Many described that it was a, a giant monkey. It's got huge claws. It's very, very hairy. It stinks to high heaven. And in fact, many of the witnesses said, I came across a giant monkey. But there were never any giant apes in the Americas, never. I met a person who claimed to have seen one of these animals. So he described this creature that was six feet six, very hairy, stank to high heaven, um, could walk on all fours and also could get up to defend itself. I showed him a reconstructed ground sloth, and the Indian looks at it and says, yes, that is what ran after me. And a light went on in my head, and I said, my goodness, this could only be a ground sloth. The giant ground sloth would have lived among the woolly mammoth and saber-toothed cats, and at nearly four tons and 20 feet tall, it would have dwarfed the legendary Sasquatch. Scientists have found fossil evidence of them throughout North and South America, and they would have been difficult to mistake for an ape. But if Dr. Oren's theory is right, maybe they're not extinct, and a smaller version of them is still out there. I've read some stories um, in some of the literature about how <clears throat> the, 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 the mouth of the Mapinguari opens up in the stomach area. What, 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 what do you think's behind all that? Uh, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, the legendary creature had a mouth turned sideways that it might be associated with our hairs that are, that are erected to secrete the, the, the bad smell. Like, like skunks do, skunks lift up their tails and, and the rest of it with the glands that would be producing these, this horrible bad smell and not a mouth. Approximately how many witnesses of the Mapanguari have you spoken to? Uh, 70, 80. Eyewitness accounts are all very, very consistent. One of the stories that's repeated 10 or a dozen times, two fellows go off into the forest to hunt, you know, the big pig-like things, the peccaries. and they split up because if you find the herd, you chase it towards your buddy. And one of them starts to hear a cry in the forest. Well, it's just me and my buddy. And the two get closer and closer until the hunter says, that's not my buddy. That's a horrible monster. What I'm curious about is, as a biologist during your field studies, have you seen any evidence yourself? Unfortunately, I've not come face to face with a Mapinguari, but I was working with the Carichiana Indians in a part of their reservation, which they normally don't go to precisely because this animal is reported there. So there's this vocalization. It's, it's like thunder. It's this incredible, ah! Shaman. He immediately left everything else to go, and he says, we're going over here in the opposite direction where the vocalization came from. They believe quite piously that if you see the animal, you will die. They're terrified. What did I do to have the devil himself appear before me in the forest?